much. I'm okay. I worked out this morning. Uh, we got our, our former PAG chair, uh, Dr. Hoa Wen, of course, uh, AMC uh, Clinics uh, in the KUAM News uh, Zoom Room. Doc, uh, we'll just start with the uh, kid vaccinations as it kind of happened so fast. I mean, we were uh, told that the vaccination or the vaccines weren't even going to be here. Uh, and that the effort would start, uh, what we had heard was like maybe next week, but... Oh, no, no, no. no? They said this week. Well, it, well, it was in that town hall, and they said, oh, we got to meet with our stakeholders. It didn't sound like they were going to start today. Um, yeah, I think it starts today and uh, t- tomorrow, UOG, right. I think on the 9th and the 10th. So they start today. Right. Yeah, yeah. they do. Yeah, the release came out uh, late yesterday afternoon, and then I think there was another one. There's a town hall about it, or a press conference this morning at 9, so we're going to go in on... Uh, uh, that doc, but this this good news for uh, you? Yes, this is very good news for uh, the children, especially for the school. Um, you know, uh, I know a lot of uh, parents are very reluctant still to have their kids vaccinated. Um, we really highly encourage them to do so. You know, I know that children uh, don't pass away often because of COVID infection. Um, but uh, again, uh, we know that they can be a carrier and they can uh, also be sick and also they can bring home to the parents and the relatives. So it's very important that, that we vaccinate the children. Children are different than us. You know, we wear our masks and we do our social distance and we do a lot of stuff to try to prevent from getting it. But remember, it's very hard to get the, the 5 to 11 or 5 to 17 to really wear their masks and social distance. So the chance to get the, the virus from someone else, uh, from their from their uh, peers, is, is much higher. Again, they don't get sick, but they they carry the, the virus back home, and that's what we're concerned about. And you know, um, uh, again, children don't pass away, but I tell you, from working as a physician, and and, uh, and I often work in the emergency room, when you have an adult to pass away. Um, it's, it's not that hard to get, but when you have a children, a child that passed away in the emergency room, it hit everybody. Now, mentally, uh, it's, it's really psychologically, it, it, it hit the, the, the staff very hard. So it's very hard to lose one child. So if we can protect one child from dying, that's what our goal is from, from doing that. Again, um, uh, we really highly encourage um, the parents to to um, to get the children vaccinated. If they have any question, please talk to the to physician. Um, so that way um, they can try to answer your concern about it. Okay, but uh, please talk to your physician. Um, the the Pfizer uh, are very safe. They give out a, a much smaller dose on the children five to eleven. Okay, and uh, including the smaller needle. Okay, so the needle is not big. <laughs> we had to be trained in that. So you needed that needle a, for Sabrina. That was long needle, very short needle. So, um, um, so it's just, it's not that bad. So, I would uh, encourage the, the parents to do that. No, the clinic will start to roll out the vaccination. The clinic also, if you visit your your uh, provider, they will start to roll out today. Okay, um, I know AMC would start that today, uh, and also there's some outreach that we. Put out there. We are working with um, um, uh, Father Duenas to get the outreach out. Um, I think the next week uh, or, or two or so uh, for the children who five to seventeen. Uh, okay, so um, we uh, will do that along with the Cat Five Zero on on the um, next two weeks or so. But yeah, they should come out. The, the guard do. I think they do from three to three p.m. to six p.m. Uh, today and tomorrow, um, so um, it's, um, come out and get the children doing that. And uh, again, uh, if you have any question, please you know, to talk to your physician, okay? Uh, but I would, before the holiday comes, the Thanksgiving, uh, Christmas, New Year, you know, that's one way to protect your family, okay? Doc, uh, you mentioned that uh, you uh, wanted parents to kind of talk with their uh, their doctors or healthcare providers about any concerns they might have with uh, giving their kid the vaccine. What are some of the concerns that you hear, and what do you say to these uh, these parents who might have questions about it? Yeah, you know the concern that that uh, most parents, uh, uh, you know, is um, is um, is the vaccine safe for the child from five to eleven? Right? It's easier to give a shot to adult, but 
you know, to give your kids here uh, as a parent, you always be more protective and we fully understand that. Uh, so, you know, um, what the parents ask is that, is that safe for the child? Does that um, do anything to make the child get sick in the future? Um, does it uh, change anything on the child? No. So that that's the, probably the, the, the most common three um, um, questions that parents ask. And again, uh, they always say that, um, you know, they heard that the, the children, uh, they don't get that sick. And why do they um, have to get the shot? And those are the, that's the main thing that we want to pass along, like I say. Uh, yes, they do not get that sick like adults does, but again, they they can be a carrier. Um, and I said, and very, very few uh, children that pass away from the COVID infection um, that documented. So like I say, losing a child is different. So we try not to, to do that. Uh, what about parents who have a concern about the myocarditis? Yeah, myocarditis is very rare, rare um, um, uh, side effect that they have uh, with the uh, with the vaccine. Um, uh, any vaccine, including your tetanus, your MMR, your various, every vaccine will have certain uh, side effect that um, um, that um, that can be severe. But again, that's a very, very, very few and far and few, right? So. Um, but the benefit of having a vaccine outweigh the small risks that the vaccine have. Okay. So, uh, and uh, again, you know, when the FDA um, uh, approved the vaccine, they make it very clearly, right? Um, the, they also concern that um, the federal and the, the government does not mandate the vaccine on children, right? That they, they state that very clearly. So um, the vaccine would be highly encouraged for the parents to have, but uh, to me, I think beside California, that that mandate to the children to get vaccine to go to school, uh, I don't know. That's that's a way 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 off the chart there, but uh, that's California. Mm -hmm. Doc, um, what can you tell parents in terms of uh, side effects or possible side effects if uh, their child is uh, vaccinated? they should prepare for yeah you know just like anything breathe that we have side effect but they um if they have would be very mild just like some congestion some chills some body aches a little bit of fever just like the adult you know we have for up to a day or two uh they need to do well rested drink lots of liquid and that those those side effects should go away you know so uh, that's something that that we tell the parents that um you, you might expect the, um, the child to have right so you bring your kid to come in to do a well child visit and you have the vaccine the, the, that giving by age group, right? So we always, even though those vaccines, the, the, the children will might have some fever. Um, so it's not nothing new on, on the vaccine, right? So you give a kid MMR, you give the give tetanus, you, um, and those just uh, children immunization, uh, they all, the few of them will have some fever. Uh, some side effect of it. So it's, that's what we tell the, the parents, expect that. If it does, you know, to make sure they get rest and lots of liquid and they, they go over in a day or so. Mm -hmm. I did want to ask, you know, in the, the CNMI, um, it appears as though they're going to start um, at some point mandating um, the COVID-19 vaccination in order for students to go to school kind of like the measles m mumps and rubella um yeah. man mandate for, for vaccinations do you foresee that or do you think that should be kind of a requirement here uh on guam for students um i think the COVID 19 would be just like the influenza of uh, the flu vaccine mm -hmm. uh, i don't think that uh, again, when the FDA approved that, they they really mentioned that you should not mandate this vaccine to the children, right? So, so I think that um, COVID nineteen sooner or later should should be just like the flu vaccine, okay. that um, is not uh, something that you have to have to go to school. And I hope and pray that uh, that don't get to the point when the government start to mandate the COVID vaccine for the children to, to go to school. Uh, I mean, we're going to lose a lot of generation uh, here for, for children that attend on our face to face school. And I don't think online school will be that great for the children. So I hope and uh, pray that that that's, don't get there. But um, I think that 
uh, whoever make the, the mandate for children to go to school, especially with COVID vaccine, uh, should really, really think about it. I did want to ask about some of the reports uh, that we've been seeing uh, regarding the possibility of the easing of restrictions. I know we've tried to get uh, Dr. Berg uh, on our show as well as uh, the, the governor. Um, but there are media that are reporting that there's a possibility that we're going to see uh, an ease in restrictions in restrictions as we approach um, the upcoming holidays. And when you look at the JIC report, it says, you know, the car score is 9.0, and we all remember the strive for five, right, um, for the further easing of restrictions. Do you, well, wh what are you hearing? You know, with the, the ease restriction, um, a lot of restriction already, you know, uh, going away already, right? Yeah. Just the, the only thing we have, the restaurant, everything 100%. So the only ease restriction that I can see is that, you know, the, the number of gathering, mm -hmm. uh, with, um, uh, to me, most people don't follow that, that gathering number anyway at this point. So I think that, um, you know, psychologically, it feels good to say you ease restriction, but uh, the word of caution is that you know, people got to understand, and from the physician uh, standpoint of view, um, is that the holiday, the um, after Thanksgiving, the Christmas New Year, tend to be the highest admission rate for non-COVID patient. Uh, I tell you, um, the hospital always full to the max during the holiday. So uh, whatever decision that they make, they really have to follow to make sure that the hospital don't get overwhelmed. Uh, I think the input that the most important input is from probably the two hospitals, GMH and GMC, because those are the two places where they get really overwhelmed um, during the holiday, That's, um, even before COVID-19 um, uh, occur, you know, the, they tend to be uh, the highest admission rate during those times. So uh, I think that uh, with the uh, COVID, you have to be very careful on, on making the decision uh, going to the holiday. I know people wanted to get together and celebrate, but um, you know, those the two decisions should be really key in the, the ability for the two hospitals to uh, handle the non-COVID uh, related admission. Okay. So just in general now, I mean, we do get the check reports and I know you see them. And like I mentioned, the car score is at 9.0 and um, I want to say how many positives that didn't seem like there was. Uh, we're not in triple digit oh. positives, right? So how how do you yeah. think we're doing now? Yeah, I, I think the the delta uh, will burn out sooner or later. It's uh, for us, it's um, it kind of burn out kind of um, uh, much longer than state. But eventually, we should see the burnout of the delta. Hopefully, with our luck, that um, during the um, a holiday, that it didn't have anything else coming. You know, so. Um, uh, uh, we see the number coming down, and we're very happy that it's coming down. Uh, I think mean, it's about uh, two months late of the burnout of the Delta, so um, hopefully it doesn't surge back up again. Right. You know, um, but again, the, the the main things is the hospital. Mm -hmm. You know, we're still in the 40 uh, right now. Um, I think that uh, in the past, um, our limitation in the hospital is 10. Uh, so we're about 30 over the number 10, so uh, we're still way up there. Okay. All right, Doc. Um, okay. Thank but, you so um, much. Again, you know, uh, we will need to uh, protect our children, to protect the family. Uh, again, I really encourage the uh, the parents to get the children to come out and get vaccinated. Um, you know, um, I know public health have from 8 to 3 or something every day, and but... Uh, Again, I would um, advise to somehow change the time of action for children uh, to after three, three o'clock in the afternoon or during the weekend, just because parents have to work and the kid have school. It's very hard for the for the parents to bring their kid to get vaccinated during, during daytime. And that's not an efficient way to do it, you know. So, um, public have to change their way somehow to do the weekend and and the evening hours, so that way the parents can bring their kids there. Doc, no one wants to work on the weekend or evening hours. We do. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Touche. <laughs>
We have to make it convenient for the parents and the children. Right. No, I totally agree. Right. You've been saying this through the whole pandemic. You've been saying we need to test off hours, make mm-hmm. it accessible to people. You've been saying we need to do the same thing in vaccinations. Totally agree. Yeah. Thank you, Doc. Okay, but you're welcome, guys. Be safe. You too. Oh, you oh, I know. Doc, sure. Doc, real quickly. Yeah. Have you heard anything, like any kind of updates on the CDC visit here? Because, you know, we've tried to have public health on the show live at any time, but... but you know, it's a gag order. Oh, man. So, yeah, that, so thanks for being really, here, uh, Nothing released yet, guys. It's really, really quiet. So I'm, I'm sure that they uh, have a lot of work to be done. And uh, uh, I hope that they have some uh, answer for us. So that we, again, uh, it's really helpful for them to be here just because it's, this is not the only variant going to hit us. No, in the next few months and next year. Uh, another van's going to come and we need to know what we're dealing with and how we can do things to improve ourselves. Thank you, Doc. You're welcome. Have All a right. good day, guys. All okay. right, take care. Uh, let's Stay keep, healthy. Yeah, let's keep it in the KUA News Zoom room. Remember, 9 o'clock, uh, there's a public health uh, press conference, right? Yeah, we found out about it, you know, just before 11 o'clock last night. But yeah. It is what it is. It is what it is. I mean, it is what it is. Mm. But, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> Yeah, the notice was sent out at like 